Hello everyone, great to be with you this afternoon. Uh, welcome to another Learn Extra Matric Revision session. This afternoon we're going to be looking at Maths Paper 2 and I'm joined by my good friends Jacques and Lee. They're going to be taking your questions. Now we've had a number of questions already. We're going to be looking at one on analytical geometry to start with. So let's go and have a look at the question and then I'll have a read through it. ABCD is a parallelogram with A, 4, 1, and B, 6, 9. The diagonals of ABCD intersect at M, 0, 3. Question 1. Calculate the coordinates of point C. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hand over to Jacques and ask him to see how we're going to get the answer to the solution. So let's join Jacques right away. We took our midpoint formula, which says if we want to find the midpoint here, we need to take this x value, we need to add it to this x value and halve the answer. And that's exactly what we did. Okay, the x coordinate for a is 4. The x coordinate for m was 0. So what we did from here to here, folks, sorry, is we now noticed that we wanted to solve for the x coordinate of c. Okay, that's what we had to go and do. So we multiplied up the 2xm and we kicked the xa over. Okay, so twice 0 minus 4 gave me the x coordinate for c. So now I know that this is the x value of negative 4. We're going to do exactly the same for the y value. So if we want the y value for coordinate c, it's going to be twice the y value for coordinate m minus the y value for coordinate a in exactly the same way as what we did there. Okay, so the y coordinate for c will then be the twice the y coordinate for m. Now, folks, the y coordinate for m is 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 minus that 1, and that gives us an answer of 5. And there we have it. The coordinates for the point C is indeed minus 4 and 5. Okay, now that's good. It's based on your midpoint formula. Let's see what the next question is asking us to do. It says, determine the equation of CD. The line segment CD, the line that joins point C and point D, we want the equation of that line. Now let's have a look what information we have about this line. We know that this figure is a parallelogram. So the pairs of opposite sides are indeed parallel to one another. But a parallelogram also has another um, condition on its sides, and that is that the opposite sides are indeed equal to one another. So they're not just parallel, they're also equal. If we need that later on, we know that. Okay, so then if we look at, uh, where was I, CD, we know that these two are indeed parallel to each other. Okay, so folks, we've got to say, what is the information we want, or what that we've got? We want the equation of the line CD, so we need to see what information we have. Now remember CD is a straight line. To find the equation of a straight line, you need two bits of information. You either need two points on the line, which in this case we don't have, or you need the gradient of the line and a point. Now let's see, look closely. This is a parallelogram. Because these two sides are indeed parallel, we can say immediately, let, let's just put here, we're doing number 2 and we're finding the equation of CD. We can say immediately that the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of CD. Why is that so? Because line AB is indeed parallel to DC. Folks, that was given. Okay, so if I want to find the gradient of AB, we all know that formula by now. To find the gradient of AB, it's going to be equal to the gradient of CD. It's the difference in the y values, which is 9 minus 1 gives 8, divided by the difference in the x values, which is 6 minus 4, and that is 2. So that gives us 
a gradient for this line which is equal to 4. Now we've got enough information. We have a gradient and we have a point that lies on the line. So to find the equation of CD, we just need to use those two in the following way. Your point gradient formula tells you that y minus the y value of c divided by x minus the x value of c is equal to the gradient of 4. Okay, now folks, you can see this also almost looks like a gradient. Now all that's left for us is to substitute in. The y value of c is 5, so I've got y minus 5, which is equal to 4 times x minus, now you'll notice that I cross multiplied this to the other side. Hence, x minus the x value of c, which is negative 4. Be careful. There's a negative and there's a negative 4. So this becomes a double negative, which changes it to a plus 4. Okay, so a bit of cleaning up to do. y minus 5 is 4x plus 16. Our 5 jumps ship to the other side. We've got y is equal to 4x plus 21. And that is the equation of dc. Now, we found it by using the gradient of the line AB. Why could we? Because those two sides were parallel. And then we had the coordinates for C. We just calculated those coordinates. Okay, folks, let's put that at the line so that if we need it later on, we know what this equation is going to be. It is Y is equal to 4X plus 21. Let's go and see what question 3 is asking us to do. Wow, this is interesting. Prove analytically that the angle AMD is 90 degrees. Prove analytically that the angle AMD is 90 degrees. Now, folks, that's this angle over here. We are required to prove that that is indeed a right angle. Now, how do we prove that, these, that this finger is perpendicular to this pen? How are we going to prove it? There's a right angle. What do we know about lines that are perpendicular? We know that the product of their gradients has to be negative 1. You're right. Okay, so we're going to find the gradient of AC and we're going to find the gradient of BD. And then we're going to prove that if we multiply those two gradients together, we do get an answer of negative 1. Okay, let's see if that is indeed the case. Now notice we don't have the gradient of any of these lines. So we have now got to see what the information is that we've got. For the line AC, we've got three points to choose from. So that's going to be easy to find that gradient. The line BD, we've got B and we've got point M. Okay, that's a straight line. So we've got, indeed, we have enough information. So let us find the two gradients. Point three, or question three. Now, the gradient, I'm going to work with 6, 9 and 0, 3 first. 6, 9 and 0, 3. So B is 6, 9 and M is 0 and 3. Okay, so I'm going to find the gradient of the line segment BM by saying the difference between the 9s. Now, please, folks, that's not a 13. That is a 3. That's supposed to be a semicolon. So 9 minus 3 is 6, divided by 6 minus 0, which is still 6, and that gives us 1. So we know the gradient for BM. Let's write it here. The gradient for this line is 1. So we expect the gradient for this to be negative 1 if our calculations are indeed correct. Okay, so let us have a look. We say 4, 1 and 0, 3 is what we're going to use. Point A is 4, 1. That it does it again. Let me just undo that. Point A is 4 and 1. And point M, we've got its naught and 3. So the gradient of AM is going to be the difference between those two um, points. 3 minus 1 for the difference in the y values. 3 minus 1 divided by naught minus 4. And we've got a bit of a problem here. 
because this gives us a 2 and that gives us a minus 4, which does not match up for these two to be perpendicular. This gives us negative a half. So folks, there's a problem here that that angle, the angle that we're looking at, which is angle AMD, let's just have a look here. Yes, it asks for angle AMD. Prove analytically it's 90. Okay, so we've just seen that gradient is negative a half. Let's just check here. We've got 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 0 is indeed um, 0. So our points are calculated correctly. So these two, we can now conclude that angle AMD is indeed not 90 degrees. Okay, folks, we've got to take a very short break. <laughs> Oh, my God.